This video will cover digital SAT grammar rules, specifically on commas. So there are four uses of commas on the SAT. The first is to separate items in a list. In this example here, it says there was a boy, a cat, and a dog. So there should be a comma after boy and a comma after cat, and not after dog. The basic rule here is to put a comma after each element in a list, except for the last element too. The second use of commas is to separate non-essential elements. This means to put commas before and after a non-essential element. In this example, it says, that boy, wearing a blue shirt, made a hundred on his math test. So in this case, the non-essential element is wearing a blue shirt. So a comma should be placed before it and after it to phase it out. The third use is to link independent and dependent clauses. So in this example, it says, while birds can fly at high speeds, they typically fly at lower speeds to conserve energy. So the dep dependent clause here is the phrase, while birds can fly at high speeds. This is also an introductory clause, and usually after introductory clauses there is a comma. And then the independent clause here is, they typically fly at lower speeds to conserve energy. So in this example, a comma should be placed after the word speeds, to mark this difference or to link the independent independent clauses. The fourth use is to link independent clauses with help from a coordinating conjunction. The coordinating conjunctions are for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. So to link two independent clauses, you have to use a comma and a coordinating conjunction. In this example, it says, those trees are going to be chopped down, comma, but the public protests occurring nearby may prevent them from being cut down. So these are two independent clauses, and they are connected by a comma and a coordinating conjunction, in this case, but. So let's look at an example. Which choice completes the text so that it conforms to the conventions of standard English? In her analysis of Edith Wharton's The House of Mirth, scholar Candace Wade observes that the novel depicts the upper classes of New York society as consumed by the appetite of, so of a soulless blink. An apt assessment, given that The House of Mirth is set during the Gilded Age, a period marked by rapid industrialization, economic greed, and widening wealth disparities. So option A says, materialism, semicolon, and. This is incorrect for a few reasons. Because the semicolon is placed outside the parentheses, the quotation marks, it is incorrect. And also because a semicolon is used to connect two independent clauses, but here there's only one independent clause in a supplementary phrase, so A is incorrect. B. Materialism and. This is incorrect because and is necessary here, and it would illogically imply that the upper classes of New York society are an apt an assessment given that the houses of birth is set during the Gilded Age. So this doesn't make sense. C. Materialism, comma. This seems to be correct because this imply this shows this places the comma in the quotation marks and it separates the independent clause from the supplementary phrase. So C seems to be the correct answer. D. Materialism no punctuation. So this is incorrect because there needs to be some sort of punctuation to separate the independent clause from the supplementary phrase and it would make sense for it to say consumed by the appetite of a soulless materialism an apt assessment given that so there needs to be some sort of boundary between this quotation and the rest of the sentence. So D is incorrect. And the correct answer is C. 